Have you ever looked at all of these mental pellets on the market? We've got sort of H&N Hornets. They've got a steel tip in a traditional sort of a hollow pointed body. We've got Gamo Lethals. They've got a steel tip in a plastic body. We've got Polymag Shorts, the various Predator pellets, steel tipped ones, pointed ones, everything you can imagine. They're all horrifically expensive, but have you ever thought, you know what, I need something just a little bit more extreme, a little bit more expensive? Well, today we're going to be looking at these. These are a custom built, well, I guess you could call them custom built, Gamo Lethal with a steel core and a silicon nitride tip to those. So I'm going to zoom in and have a look at them. Right then, guys, so here's a little close up of them. These are a 177 pellet, so the body of these is the Gamo Lethal plastic outer sheathing. But the interesting thing with these is they've got a silicon nitride tip to those, so that's an incredibly hard modern ceramic. Will it be any good downrange? I don't know. It's quite windy out there. I mean, the manufacturing tolerances on these are pretty slack, so I can't imagine they're going to be very accurate. But what we're going to do, we're going to go and shoot a few different things. We're also then going to see if we can shoot through the safety specs that we tried shooting through before. I've also got here some of the H&N Hornets. A lot of you said I needed to try those because they reckoned that they would go through these lenses. So we've got a few things to try. It's incredibly cold out there today, so we're not going to be out for too long. Just going to have a bit of fun with these, see whether or not they're any good. And then we'll see if they've got a bit of a party piece having a ceramic tip on those. So I'll see you at the farm. Right, so we're just getting everything set up. It's bitter cold up here. It's just above freezing at the moment. I've got some of the plumber's putty just in the back of the tray here. This is just over an inch thick. We're gonna fire off one of the H&Ns and then one of the Gamo custom jobs. We're gonna tuck them in the corner probably. When we get home, we're going to dissect it and see which of the two penetrated the furthest into the putty. Now, this is a really interesting stuff. It's almost certainly gonna stop them. They're probably not going to go in very far. But what I'm really curious about is whether or not we can see if the tip, so the metal tip and the ceramic tip, detach from the main body and end up travelling a bit further through. So I've got the cat run up the other end. I'll see you up there. Right, we'll go for the H&N Hornets first. So these are the steel-tipped lead pellets. Now we're just going to pop two of these side by side into the plumber's putty. Hopefully when we get back in the warm we can dissect them. Now we've used these before. They penetrate quite hard but they're also a fair bit heavier than the Gamo Custom Jobs. The Gamos are somewhere in the region of seven grains, so very light, in fact, they're a little bit less than that, they're more like six grains, and these are in the region of nine grains, so they're 50% heavier. Just gonna go for the bottom right. Okay, so that plumber's putt is really interesting. Basically, nothing penetrates into it because it's a non-Newtonian fluid. The harder it gets hit, the harder it reacts and seems to stop stuff very well. So the back of that skirt is basically looks like it's a pretty much proud with the plumber's putty itself. So here's the first of the Gamo Lethal custom jobs. Remember, these aren't a Gamo product. Gamo don't make these. These are custom made just for a bit of fun. These plastic pellets, I'm not a big fan of them. The fact that they're plastic, I don't want to be shooting that all over the place. We use them into a soft pellet trap. They can be collected and then they can go in the bin, recycled, whatever. But and we have used these a few times before. Every time I use these, I'm amazed at how slick they are on loading. They fit in the barrels really nicely. And although historically plastic bodied pellets have not been good, the old Prometheuses are not great either. There's got to be some mileage in it because if you've got a tin of them Gamo Lethals with the plastic and the steel tip, they're basically indestructible. Lead pellets are incredibly fragile. By nature of the lead itself, obviously it deforms on impact, which is what we want, but because of that, you shake them around, they're rough handled, bad transit, they get battered. So, I don't know, the plastic pellets really not a good idea. But maybe there's other materials out there that are potentially a bit more environmentally friendly, maybe, that we could use as an outer skin, maybe with a lead core or something like that. Hopefully that bearing doesn't come in contact with the rifling, so let's send it, shall we? Oh my God, it's skewed way off up and left. Um, Ooh, let's go and have a look at that, shall we? <laughs> wow, okay, so that has gone in quite a long way. That's all intact. That's, that's deformed hugely. Let's just pop that back in up the top there. We'll look at those later on. Has that stayed? Oh, see, look, the core's come out, but that's almost... Wow. <laughs> shall we send it again? Well, it barely penetrated. I guess that's on account of the weight itself, but because of the hardness, if you like, the density, I suppose you'd call it, of that ceramic tip on there, I wonder if this will end up shooting through those polycarbonate safety glasses. I've got the other ones on my head. We're definitely not going to be shooting these at a solid target without safety goggles on. 
there's a good chance that these are going to ricochet and be pretty dangerous but it doesn't look like that ceramic bearing has come in contact with the rifling of the barrel which is good of course the the midsection if you like of the pellet and the skirt have kept it quite well centralized so yeah not accurate didn't penetrate particularly well but we can probably reuse it so let's have a little go at that shall we well, well that's pretty interesting that um is almost entirely reusable we've got a little bit of putty left around the edge i've cleaned it up as best i can but i don't think it's going to make it any um, more inaccurate we'll use the same aim point that we did again so we'll send it back down and see whether or not we can actually hit anything let's go Ooh. okay so it's moved up a little bit left and a little bit higher than the last one but not quite as far away considering we've already reshot it let's go and see if we can grab it again and reshoot it right it's been shot twice now well okay so there's very little in the way of um additional rifling marks on that main body that could go again i'll tell you what we're going to do we'll do a third shot with that to see whether or not i'm using the same aim point i'm basically aiming here this is where the point of impact is so we'll do the same again we'll aim there just with the third one to see whether or not it's viable to be reused certainly wouldn't really recommend it guys unless you're plinking in the garden whatever but certainly would be using these in the first place to be fair right that temperature's dropping really quick so this is the third time that we're using this same pellet i mean you can't do that with lead pellets i mean i certainly wouldn't recommend that everyone goes out and buys plastic pellets but the fact that we've shot that well it will be the third time and it's not quite as wildly inaccurate as i anticipated it might be still feels beautifully slick to load Let's go again, let's use the same aim point and see whether or not we stamp it on one of the existing pellet splats. Oh, okay. Right, now we're in. <laughs> now it's gone a bit wild. It's skewed way off and up. Let's go and have a look at that. Right, so we've got the tip and the centre section here. I don't know where the main skirt went. I, don't, I can't see it on the floor anywhere here, so I don't know whether it came off on the way through in flight. Maybe we'll have caught it on the footage on the GoPro. Um, we'll have a look at that later on, but we'll keep hold of the little tip here. Yeah, interesting. What we're going to do now then, we're going to get the old safety squints out. We'll get a fresh one of these out and see whether or not we can actually bust through them. Now, it's very, very cold. I don't know whether the polycarbonate, this is the other set of space, this is the other set of safety specs, obviously. I don't know whether now they're quite cold, whether the actual polycarbonate's more likely to fracture or anything. But we know for a fact that this ceramic tips, these bust through glass incredibly well. So whether or not this polycarbonate can stop them, I don't know. It's incredibly tough stuff, this. We learned quite a lot, actually, in the last video when we were filming trying to shoot through these with the lead-free pellets. Quite a few you'd said that the actual testing for these, the impact testing they do is very similar, actually, to a sort of a 12-foot-pound air rifle. So that was pretty cool to learn. But we've got the original set. We're going to set them up in here again and see if we can bust through them. Right, the same safety specs are in there now from the last experiment. What we're going to do, we're going to put a couple of shots in with the H&N first in the Hornets. I don't know whether they're going to go through. This is really fantastic stuff, this polycarbonate. And then what we'll do, whether or not they're accurate enough, we'll have a couple of shots with the old Gamos and see whether or not they bust through. Now, you can see already these big dings that are in here. These were done at really short range. We're just under 25 yards. The h and is going to be making about 11 and a bit foot pounds, so 11.2, something like that. No idea what these other little ones are going to be making. I'm not even going to attempt to run them through the chrono, but they're incredibly light. They're going to be relatively down on power, but they are going to be coming through incredibly fast. And of course, that ceramic tip is incredibly hard, so maybe it will fracture them. Certainly going to be interesting. Right, first up then, we'll do a couple of the H&M Hornets. These were by far and away the biggest request I've ever had on the channel. After we shot them lead-free ones at that set of specs before, everyone was like, you need to try these. They certainly are a mean looking pellet. We actually shot the through a rifle scope with those last year, but let's give them a couple of shots now and see whether or not we can get through. But I don't feel particularly um, confident that these will. I'm not taking any chances with this polycarbonate. With a lead pellet, it actually absorbs a huge amount of the impact. And from last time, even with the lead free pellets, we were getting very little in the way of ricochets. There was only coming back a foot or so. So it was absorbing a huge amount of the energy. Whereas Certainly with these ceramic tipped ones, I reckon it's going to be a bit dodgy. So I'm going to go for the right hand lens straight in the centre. I'm not sure whether or not the um, point of impact will change after shooting the plastic pellets. The barrel is almost certainly going to be a bit fouled, but we're just going to punt them in to the centre of the right lens. <laughs> it jumped it. Right, hang on then, let's get Whoa. Right, they've gone back about six foot. That was funny. Okay, so look. 
that's the first one that showed any sort of signs of damage. You can see there's a little bit of a white bit round there. I don't know whether that's a fracture or what, but that's certainly the most damage that we've had from that sort of range. So we're going to have another shot. We'll aim at the same place and see if we can get through them, and then we'll swap over to the ceramic tipped ones and go again. That was really mad watching that jump up and out. That flung back about six foot, and they are quite well stuck into that um, putty backing. Right, second shot, same again, right hand lens. Oh, has that gone through? Right, with them H&Ns, they're really quite accurate little things for a pointed tip. You think generally they're a bit of a gimmick, but actually these are very accurate. They're stacked two on top of each other. We'll have a better look at these at home, but they've actually enough shots for that. I think you'd probably get through that, but certainly for general shooting and things like that, these cheapy safety glasses from Screwfix are really quite stout. So we're going to go into the left-hand lens now with the ceramic tips and see whether or not they being that much harder than a steel tip will fracture it and go through. Right, so that was pretty impressive of all of the pellets that we've tried so far then. The h and Hornets were the nearest to going through. They certainly haven't really damaged it. If you was unlucky enough to get one in the face, you'd certainly be okay. Well, I'm not gonna say you'd be okay, but it certainly, the experiment suggests that you would be okay. And as I've said before, these are just the cheapest safety squints from Screwfix. It's quite encouraging to know. Right, so we're back on the ceramic tipped custom game lethals Let's go. So we're gonna go onto the left-hand lens going to aim at the very centre of it, whether or not they're accurate enough to actually hit it. Um, did they even hit it? Did it leave the bag? Well, I don't know where that went at all. There's a splat up the top here, so I don't know whether it just skewed off wildly up the top and we completely missed it. I think what we need to do is put the lenses that way round. We'll probably aim down here and maybe we'll actually be able to hit it, but certainly not that accurate. Okay, we've got a few more, let's keep going. Well, I didn't expect to entirely miss that. I guess it's actually cleared out from here. There's nothing left in the shroud or anything else. I think what I might quickly do is just um, Let's just chuck that into the back board just to make sure that we haven't got one stuck in the barrel. Right, to be on the safe side, I'm just going to go to the right hand side, sorry, the left hand side of the tray. Right, that's fine, so that's where it ought to be. Right, then. Let's go again with the ceramic one. I reckon it was up that top left. It's getting right up, it's cold. Right, let's go again. Let's see if we can put one into the... Wow, they're all over the place. I aimed about the bridge of the nose portion, and that's actually almost where it went. But we did get a pellet strike, so let's go have a look. Right, well, at least we hit it. <laughs> There's no mistake in that bearing strike on there. Look at that. Well, nowhere near going through, but that's a really nice defined little dent on there. It's pretty cool, actually. It's a shame that we can't make these a little bit heavier to get the power up a little bit. Although they're running incredibly fast, these are going to be running probably somewhere in the region of, I don't know, well over 800 feet per second. But because they weigh basically six grains, they don't have much retained energy. They don't have much energy to start with. So you've got a similar depth dent on that little tiny bearing than you have on the lead pellets or the lead free pellets at much closer range. Yeah, wildly inaccurate. I think what we'll do now then, we're going to swap over to a harder target. So I've actually got some remnants from the clay that we used before. So hardened clay, hopefully when we hit it with them pellets, it'll all explode and look really cool. Let's give it a go. Right, this is a leftover from the clay. I forgot about it. So this is actually now air dried clay that has air dried. It's still got a bit of a give to it in the middle there, but it's really, really tough. So I'm hoping that both of the H&N and the Gamo custom jobs are going to stick into this quite well. Maybe if we take a shot nearer the edge where it's a lot harder, it might actually explode. So that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, let's give it a go, shall we? Right, next up then, H&N Hornet. We'll take that into this air-dried clay. 
because it's harder, I'm expecting it to actually penetrate further than it does with the putty. The putty's got this really peculiar sort of texture to it. So again, because it's a non-Newtonian type fluid, the harder you hit it, the more sort of resistance you get. Whereas this, now it's dry, hopefully, should just go and bust straight through it. I'm gonna go up to the top right. That's gone in quite a long way. Right, now we'll go back over to a ceramic job. Right at the top. Hasn't penetrated very far at all. Now I wonder if that's on account of just the lack of weight. Let's go and have a look. Did that drop back out the H&M? Can't see it here. Has that gone right in? I don't know. We'll have to consult the GoPro footage, but you can see here that the ceramic tipped one. Well, it's gone in quite a long way. That's actually really quite hard. Well, they're a bit junk. I tell you what we do need to do actually now then. What we need, we need a metal target. So I'm going to go and get a bit of aluminium plate. We'll do the same again side by side and see whether or not that ceramic punches a bigger hole than the steel tip of the H&M. Let's do it. Right, safety specs on for this one. Don't try this one at home guys. Do it at a mate's house when his wife's out. That's probably your safest bet. You won't get hurt then. But definitely want safety goggles on. Little aluminium plate down there. We've got the H&M Hornet here first. Let's see what, if any, damage it does to the alley. Oh, that's quite a smack. It stayed fairly upright. Let's have a go now with the ceramic one. Now this feels really dodgy. This is likely to ping off. We're in a completely safe area here, guys. We're all enclosed. There's no one around. It can't go anywhere. It can't leave the boundaries. <laughs> Let's go. All right, same again, just going to aim for the other pellet strike. Chances of hitting it are slim. Oh, where did that go? How can you miss like a six inch? Oh, man. <laughs> you get a really blatty sound, actually. It's almost as if, um, it's almost as if the pellet breaks up in the air, like the steel and Ceramic core leaves the skirt mid-air. Right, let's go again. How are you missing it? What? I've got no idea what went on then. Hopefully the GoPro got it. So that's the um, H&N. That's got a lovely little ding in there. Nice dent on the back. I tell you what, that's actually gone and penetrated probably at least two and a half millimeters into there, but I'm not sure where the other one's actually hit. We've got a really decent pellet smack in the back here of the tray. I think that must have been it at the top. What? Wow. <laughs> if that was it, that's ridiculous. That's nearly punched clean through that tray. <laughs> um, right, let's stand that back up again. Let's aim down a little bit lower. I don't know whether... This is why it's always a good idea, guys, to have a big safe backstop around you because some of these weird, wonderful things can fling off everywhere. As I said, we're completely enclosed. We're all safe down here. But oh, I wonder if that... I don't know. We'll have to review the footage, but there's a really mad ding up there. So let's go again, shall we? Well, both of those, they've put in a lot more damage into their metal targets and I thought that ding in the back of the baking tray there is ridiculous. Let's have another go with an H&M Hornet. Let's put one of those straight into the back of the baking tray to the other side of that pellet strike that's already there for a comparison. Right, so it looks like we've got two decent pellet strikes in the back of the tray. Now let's go over to the ceramic job. It's a shame these are as inaccurate as they are because punched a lovely hole in the back of that tray. Right, let's aim for the alley plate again. Let's aim straight for the centre of it. Hope we get a clean here. Oh, got it. Right, last. Right, cool. I right, finally got a hit on there. Wow. So despite it being lighter, it's actually left a bigger dent on the back, so it's transferred a lot more energy We'll take a better look at that when we get home, but considering that's a rounded bearing that's hit that, 
against the pointed tip of the H&F. That's really put quite a lot of damage to that. What? <laughs> Oh, well, there you go, look, H10 Hornet's gone clean through the baking tray. Well, it hasn't gone through, so I wonder where the actual pellet is. That's really cool. Right, I'm getting freezing cold. We're going to collect all this stuff up and we'll have a little better look at this when we get home. Right then, guys, I guess that answers the question why there's no commercially available ceramic-tipped pellets. They were absolutely useless. Basically, in every aspect, the H&N Hornets with their steel tip on there outperformed them. They're way more accurate. They penetrate better. They deform massively. I mean, I was certainly quite concerned that we might get a lot more ricochet than we did. Certainly on the glasses, it was interesting seeing these ping off a little bit. Of course, they were absorbing the impact energy and the pellet wasn't coming back towards us. It certainly felt a bit sketchy than it was. There was no way I was shooting these without the glasses on. And even these ones, these are the most basic screw fix, cheap safety glasses. I just don't think we're going to get through these with anything sort of sub 12. Maybe with uh, FAC stuff, definitely, I think you'd get through. But the H&N Hornet was the nearest so far. You can see on the inside there that it's sort of white there. It's almost torn through. Now there was two shots directly on top of each other there. And that's the nearest that we've got to actually breaking through these lenses. The little ceramic one, nice little ding in there, but no chance that that was going through there at all and wildly inaccurate. So actually a lot harder to even hit something that size, which is what, five, six inches long by two and a half inches tall. The chances of these damaging the barrel is quite high as well. Now, as I've already mentioned, the pellets sit well centered. So the bearing tip is not likely to come into contact with the rifling. But if it did, because it is as hard as it is, there's a very good chance that that could have caused barrel damage. We definitely got away with it for the moment. We're absolutely fine, still accurate with these Hornets. Now all of these sort of gimmicky hunting pellets, you know, the tipped ones, I don't personally have a need for them, but H&N Hornet with the steel tip and the polymag shorts, the Predator polymag shorts, they're actually both very, very accurate, which means they must be built to a pretty high tolerance. The tips on those have to be quite concentric because downrange, the both of those are very, very good. So you can see here on the aluminium plate that we've got an actual pinpoint hole from the H&N Hornet there, a relatively big ding on the back of it. The ceramic bearing actually went in a lot deeper than I thought it would do. So certainly at high power rifles, maybe higher speeds, Maybe it would have gone through, but certainly that three millimeter thick aluminium is going to stop all of those. I was expecting that we would get more ricochet off of these, hence the glasses myself. But again, this absorbed all of the impact from those and the pellets basically just dropped at, at the floor of the target, basically underneath the GoPro. So this is the fairly dry air drying clay. The actual H&N Hornet left a fairly shallow ding. You can see possibly there, there's a bit of a pinpoint hole, but... The ceramic tip actually went further. The skirt came off the back of it and the actual head was stuck in there. You can see that there. Yeah, so we got away with it today, guys. I thought it would be a fun experiment just to see whether or not they actually worked. Pretty much a complete failure. It was fun to try it. It was nice to be out. It's the first time I've been out on film this year. It's been so cold and so windy. It looks like for the next week or two, it's going to get even colder and windier. So as soon as I get a break in the weather, I've got some more cool stuff to try. We've got some more stuff to test. Yeah, so be very careful if you want to try this sort of stuff, guys. You end up wrecking your barrels if you get a ceramic tip. Take a chunk out your rifle and you're going to regret that. So luckily, I'm going to be doing some work on the Catran later this year. So it wasn't really a risk. The barrel is actually fine. There's no signs of any damage. It certainly didn't get caught by that bearing on the way through. Luckily, really. But that'll do it for this one, guys. I will catch you as soon as this weather breaks a little bit. We've got a lot of cool stuff to go over. We've got some new rifles on the way. We've got a lot to cover. So I'll see you then.